Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking a bit more at points of inflection. And to remind you guys what points of inflection are, they're the points on our curve where the concavity changes. They're the points where a curve will go from concave up, like here, to concave down which is here and here. We can see that at this point, the curve is concave up. And then after about here, the curve goes to being concave down. And then over at this point, the curve goes being concave up to being concave down again. So it's these two points and I'll just label them here, that are our points of inflection. And you've got the spelling there. Okay, so it's the points where the curve starts to bend the other way. Here, the curve bends up. Here, the curve bends down. And over here, the curve bends down. Where the curve bends down, so in this area, the second derivative is going to be negative. The second derivative is going to be less than zero. It's going to be negative because it is concave down. Okay? And over here, in this section, we know the derivative is going to be greater than zero, which is positive because this part of the curve, this region here, is concave up. So where you get a part on the curve or at all these points, at any of these points that are concave up, if you put those points into our second derivative function, which you just find by differentiating the first derivative, and remember the second derivative just has a symbol like this, and some people also write it like this, where it's dy squared over dx squared. It's just got the squared because we've done two differentiations. Okay, so these are the same. We're going to use this one because it's much easier. So our points of inflection are where the concavity changes. Don't get them confused with these points, which we know are turning points, which are where the derivative, the first derivative equals zero. And down here, the first derivative equals zero. But at these points, the second derivative equals zero. Okay, at these points of inflection, the second derivative equals zero. There is no concavity. Okay, and hopefully you remember how to find the second derivative at any point and then to find what each point is doing. And if not, you can look back at some of the other videos. But the other type of point of inflection we're going to look at is a special type. You can see here that these two points would have gradients that are not zero. If I found the first derivative of this point, we can see that it has a tangent that would have a gradient that is a positive. And over here, this tangent would have a gradient that's negative. But now, let's move over to this graph. If I look at the point here, where the curve goes from being concave down, it's down here, in terms of its concavity, to being concave up, to bending up, because this curve is going in like that, whereas this one is going up like this, it's about at this point, at zero, for y equals x cubed, that that concavity changes. But if we look closer at this point, you'll also notice that the derivative there is zero. The derivative is zero, and the second derivative is zero, because it's also a point of inflection. So it's got both of these things. The first derivative is zero. There's no gradient. 
at that point, and that's also the point where the concavity changes. It's where the curve goes from bending down to bending up. So it does both of those things. So it is a turning point, but it's not actually a turning point because we know a turning point is whenever y dash or the first derivative equals zero. But we know now that it doesn't actually turn. It goes from increasing to increasing again. So the first derivative here is positive. I'll do a plus sign. And the first derivative for all these points is still positive. So it didn't actually turn. It should have gone back down here if it was like a normal graph or a parabola. So when a graph has a point where its first derivative is zero and its second derivative is zero, we call this point a horizontal or a stationary because it's not moving at that point, point of inflection. It's not just a point of inflection like these points. It's a horizontal or stationary point of inflection. The gradient there is not changing, but there also is no gradient, or the, the gradient is zero. So the gradient is zero there, and the gradient is not changing there. So two things are happening there. Only one thing is happening there of significance, which is that the second derivative is zero. Here, the second derivative is zero and the first derivative is zero. So remember this term. You can either remember it as a horizontal point of inflection because we know the gradient is horizontal or a stationary point of inflection because the derivative is not moving there. It's like a turning point, but the curve doesn't turn because it goes back up. Okay, so that's what a horizontal point of inflection is. And again, you can find it simply by getting an equation like y equals x cubed, finding the first derivative, which is just 3x squared, and then finding the second derivative, which would be to pull 2 to the front here and times it by 3 to get 6x, and then make it equal 0. And we can see that dividing both of these sides by 6, you're going to get x equals 0, which is where that point was. And at x equals 0, if we sub this point back into our original equation over here, we're going to get y equals 0 cubed, which is also 0. So that gives us our point. That is the coordinate. The point where x equals 0 and y equals 0 is a stationary point of inflection. It's not just a point of inflection like these two points. It is also stationary. The gradient is also 0 there. Okay, guys. I hope that helped. That's all you need to know about points of inflection. The next thing we're going to look at is how to use that to help us sketch curves or functions. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to share and subscribe.